I'm Adobe Developer Evangelist Kevin Hoyt. In this series, we've been exploring how to get started with HTML5 Canvas. Now, so far, we've taken a look at how to put the canvas in action, how to draw on the canvas, how to style the canvas, how to let the user draw on the canvas. And we're going to take that one step further and let the user actually interact with objects that appear to be on the canvas. So let's head over to Dreamweaver CS5 here, where I've got a snippet of code already in place, uh, and we'll extend upon that to actually let the user interact with what's drawn. So if you look at the uh, code here, you'll notice that I've got our canvas and our context. This is essentially getting a reference to the canvas and preparing to use the context. And then I have this box object. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that is here in a moment. As I come down the page here, I have a uh, statement, if canvas got to get context, essentially is saying, hey, is this uh, browser supporting Canvas? And if it is, let's go ahead and start doing drawing. So we get the context reference to be able to do our drawing. And then the next, next line is actually a method called draw. And draw is in a method you've seen before. It's a custom method I wrote to actually draw a box on the screen. So if we slide on down here, we look at the custom function for draw. It gets a context and the box. So essentially the context says, what drawing surface do you want to draw on? Because you might have more than one canvas in any given page. So in this case, we know what context we're going to be drawing on. And then the second uh, option or the argument here in this case is box. So you remember we established that box variable up here earlier that I kind of just breezed over. The box in this case is an object that represents the X and Y placement of the start of a, of a box, the upper left corner, and then the width and the height of a box. Uh, and in this case, uh, so those are all the properties that are relative to a box. Yeah. At this point, we're going to pass that box off to the draw method, and it will look at those properties and go ahead and draw it. We'll talk about why I want to pass a kind of a box object to the draw method here in just a second. So in the draw method, we actually have a function to clear the rectangle, so clear the drawing surface, set up the stroke style, uh, set up a line width to make this kind of rectangle pop a little bit, and then go ahead and stroke it and fill it. And you can see over here in my live view in Dreamweaver CS5 that I have a uh, dark blue border around a light blue uh, fill, and that's the box that we'll be able to interact with. So the user sees something at this point, and then they feel like they can click on it and interact with it. So we'll go ahead and take that the next step and let the user actually interact with it. Now the problem with this is that Canvas, unlike the DOM, doesn't actually have individual event listeners for individual elements inside of the DOM. So if you have a div or a span or some other uh, piece of content inside of your HTML page, you can attach event listeners uh, to those various objects. The problem is, is when you're drawing on a canvas, that that's a flat rasterized bitmap. There, there's no, there is no individual objects. While it may look like there's an individual object on the canvas, there is no actual individual object. Uh, it's just one canvas. So in this case, we want to let the user actually draw or uh, drag and drop that individual blue element that we're drawing on the canvas. We need to know where that draggable element is and then re-render it as the user moves uh, and interacts with the surface of the canvas. And so that's why I set up that virtual box uh, property. Uh, the box has a X and Y, where is it, and then what's the width and height on it. And you might, can, you might kind of take that to the next step and have an array of other virtual properties, for example, for circles or other rectangles or stars or whatever it is you're drawing, um, and keep an, an array of those and iterate through the array to be able to update the drawing surface on a regular basis. In this case, we want to actually let the user interact with that virtual box. And so let's head back into the code here and take a look at that. Now, I've got our canvas already set up. We're drawing the box initially. In order to let the user interact with this, I'm going to let, uh, ask uh, jQuery to listen for when the mouse comes down on the canvas. So we'll say mouse down, and that's on the canvas. And we'll go ahead and capture that event. So now when the mouse goes down on the canvas, the thing we're going to want to be able to do is say, hey, is the mouse down in the space that represents the interactive element or any interactive element that might be on the surface of the canvas? So in order to figure out where the mouse is at, we first need to figure out how far offset the canvas is from the rest of the page. So we'll say offset here equals canvas offset. It gives us an offset that we can use, and we'll say, uh, if the mouse is down based on that offset inside of the canvas, within that space that is the box, 
then go ahead and do stuff with it. And I actually, rather than code all those lines up, I have a pre-built snippet for that. So I'll just go ahead and drop that in here. And so here's our if statement that says, hey, if the mouse is in that space, and you'll notice I'm using the event page X, and event page Y, but also the offsets to know again where that canvas is in the context of the box. So we're tracking the mouse on the canvas proper. And then if it is within that space, we can go ahead and uh, start working with it. Now, what I want to do is actually draw it, draw the box where it uh, is now newly located. But that means we actually need to relocate it first. So um, let's go ahead and say box.x equals offset, we use event page x minus offset left box y equals event dot page y minus offset dot top. So that gives me where the box is going to be positioned based on where the mouse went down. And then we'll go ahead and draw on the context that box. So we'll update our drawing surface. So as we come over here to live view and just kind of get a little progress report, if we actually put our mouse down, um, on the box, if you notice I put it on the canvas, nothing happens, but if I put it down in the box, it's gonna shift a little bit. That's because I'm using the upper right uh, upper right uh, corner to actually draw from. Uh, you might choose to shift it around a little bit depending on your needs. And so we know now that the mouse down will actually draw the box. Now we need to be able to move the mouse and have that f fire off events as well. So as long as we're inside of that, let's go ahead and update where the box is, and then let's go ahead and add to the document a mouse move listener function event. And we'll also want to be able to uh, mouse up on that to remove any event uh, handlers we have. So let's go ahead and put that in there as well. So now we we'll say, uh, in terms of the mouse movement, we'll go ahead and figure out, just like we've been doing, essentially where our offset is. Offset equals canvas offset. And then we want to go ahead and adjust where the box is based on where the mouse is moving now. So we'll go ahead and say box.x equals event page x, page x minus offset left and box y equals event dot page y minus offset top. So that positions the box where it should be. And then we'll go ahead and draw on the context that box. Now as we move, we'll be able to draw that box. And then again, at the end of the day, I also want to remove the event listeners when the mouse comes up. And so we'll say unbind mouse move and unbind the mouse up. So remove those event listeners so we don't continue to draw when the mouse is up and uh, the user no longer wants the drawing behavior to happen. Or in this case, the movement interaction with the object. And so if we come over here and we click within the context of our box, we can move as long as we're within the context of, the, of uh, that box when we click. If I click outside and drag, nothing happens because I'm not in the space of that interactive element. Click inside the box, it goes ahead and lets me move it around. And again, it's not actually moving the box around, it's just redrawing this virtual object that exists in a rasterized bitmap and updating it essentially as fast as I move the mouse. So that's the basics of getting user interaction. And you might use this, for example, for games you might be building on Canvas or other types of interactive content. Um, and that's the basic hooks for how to let the user interact with things that appear to be interactive, but that aren't in terms of a rasterized Canvas space. Now there's a lot more to come in this series on Canvas, so stick with me. Until next time, I'm Kevin Hoyt.